Welcome to this tutorial uh, from Indie Game Development. Uh, we're going to take you through creating a very simple game. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening a new Action Script 3 movie. Uh, at the top, once you've opened it, you'll have a timeline. Imagine this is like a flip book. Um, in all reality, we're only going to use two of these uh, cells, but uh, these cells go through time, so as you're going forward in this direction, you'll be playing a movie as if it was a standard movie, um, like a flip book. As you flick through the pages, it make an animation. Um, these days, Flash isn't always just used for that. In fact, traditionally, it's always had um, programmatic uh, ways of controlling the movie. Um, but today, we're only going to use two cells, and uh, it won't get too complicated with that. Uh, in the middle here we have our work area, this is where the movie is, we can put our animation stuff in here. Um, unlike a normal animation though, most of our code will handle the uh, effects on the screen rather than actually having animations on here. Um, that will make this much easier to port to other platforms. And down the bottom we have uh, actions in the frame. Um, so you can only have actions in here in the root movie. Then we have properties, which allows us to examine whatever we've clicked on. So in this case, we're looking at the movie itself. It tells us which version of Flash we're looking at, uh, what, what uh, programming language we're using, ActionScript 3, how many frames per second we're running at. 24 is pretty much standard as TV, so that's what they've used. And then the size of the movie clip, so we can change this however we want to. Change the background color, that sort of thing. Very really simple stuff. Okay, but we're not going to need to know too much about that, so I won't delve into it too much. We're going to need to actually save this first. So let's save that. And we need to create some code behind this. So we need to have a way of controlling this movie so we can tell it what to do. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to add a second uh, frame to this movie by right clicking on that second frame and inserting a blank keyframe. The keyframe is a frame which can be referenced by name um, which allows us to loop around the movie um, to be able to tell it to go to certain points within the movie but like I said we've only got two frames in this movie. The first frame will be for the loader to tell us how much of the movie is loaded and the second frame will be for the actual action to happen. In. We're going to need to give it a, a name so right down the bottom, go to properties, I'm going to call it game loop. Okay, you'll see a little flag appear above it now, which tells you it's got um, a name associated with it. And if I go to file and action script settings, I want to give this um, what's known as a class, uh, a place where we can place code that will control this movie. So I'm going to call that main. That's the document class. Uh, underneath here it says export classes in frame 1. Well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to export it in frame 2 because we want all of the heavy code, all of the stuff that needs loading, to appear in the second frame. That way, the first frame just loads up the rest of the movie and you get a nice progression there. Otherwise, everything loaded in the first frame and you wouldn't know what was going on. So I'm going to click on OK with that. Okay, save that. Now, it hasn't actually created a class yet. What we need to do is tell it to actually create it. Okay, so by default, you will have a class here, which extends this movie clip. Okay, when I say extends, it means it allows us to extend the functionality of the movie clip to allow us to do other things with it, control it. Um, inside there, by default, it will have created this function called main, which is, you'll notice is the same name as the class. This is a constructor. Constructor runs the first time that this class has ever loaded. Um, so what we want it to do is basically to tell it to... Um, yeah, we need a way of controlling this movie. So the first thing we're going to do is add an event listener. Now, an event listener basically 
when something happens on the system, an event, like the mouse being clicked or um, a frame being entered in a movie or a keyboard being pressed in some way, then it raises an event and we can trap that event and tell it to do something with it. So what I'm actually going to do is say stage dot add event listener. And then say event dot enter frame. Okay, what we're doing here is saying that every time we enter a frame, we want something to be called. And we actually want to be calling something that will handle the game. In this case, we're going to call it game loop. What we need to do is create a little function which will handle the game for us. So, the function game loop. Now, there are a couple of other things that need to be done here. I'm just going to fill them in. You don't need to worry about them for now, but basically we're not going to return anything. We're going to return void. Uh, it's basically not going to do anything based on this function. And there's actually a parameter that comes in, which is called e, which is an event. And that just references a frame that was called into game loop. Um, so, this function will now handle the game for us. Every time it enters a new frame up here, it'll call this function. And what we're going to do is tell it to keep looping around itself. So, go to and play game loop. Now, really, I've called the function and this frame the same thing, which is probably not quite right, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. So it's going to keep looping around this frame over and over and over and over again until we tell it to stop. Okay, so now we need to tell the uh, game to do something. It's all very well that we've got a loop, we need it to actually do something. So what we need it to do is to initialize itself, to set all the things up that it needs to do. But we're going to have a little flag in here called initialized, which is a boolean, true or false. By default, we have not initialized. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is sometimes Flash needs an extra frame to get everything ready um, so that it can use the objects which it's set up. Um, it's not so much a problem with objects which we're creating programmatically, but if we created an object and just left it on the movie frame, um, you would have problems with it. So what I'm going to do is in the game loop, I'm going to say if it's not initialized, then do this bit. If it is initialized, then do this bit. So once we go in here, I want to say initialized equals true. And then once it's called this once, it will then call this forevermore. It will keep on looping around the game loop. Now, why do I want to do this? Well, actually, I want to be able to put some objects on the screen. So, so here, the main movie clip, I'm actually want to create a new symbol. A symbol being a movie clip or a button or something like that, but in this case, it's actually a movie clip. I'm going to insert new symbol, and we're going to call it ball. Export that to action script so we can actually programmatically interact with it. And you'll see down here there's a thing called a class for it, called ball as well. Now this is like having code within that uh, movie clip. Just as we've got code here to handle the main movie clip, you can have code with inside the ball, but we're not going to do it this time because um, this is very simple code and we don't need to get that complicated with it. Okay, I'm going to create a little circle and I'm going to align it in the middle so when we work with it, I know where the center is going to be. 
Um, for this demonstration, I want to be able to show that when I'm interacting with this ball, it changes color. So up here on the timeline, I want to create another frame. I'm going to say insert keyframe. What this will do is create another frame which I can reference, and it actually copies the contents of the frame four, which is quite handy. Um, so in frame one, I actually want this ball to be red. And in frame two, I want it to be green. So I can tell it when it's not doing anything, you need to be in frame one. And when you're doing something, you need to be in frame two. OK. So now, go back to the root of the scene. You can see over here, we've now got a ball object in the library. And that means we can actually do something with it. We can actually interact with it. So back in our code. When it's initializing, I actually want to create um, one of these balls so I can actually uh, move it around the screen and do some various different things with it. It's not terribly exciting, but it's good for us to explore how to manage these things. One of the things I'd like to do, though, is because you have many, many, many different objects that we need to reference it somehow in here. So I'm going to say ball object, which is the type of ball. So when I'm doing code, I can just reference this ball object, which I'm going to create or get rid of at will. Well, this allows us to have a fixed point so we can reference that ball. And down here, when we're initializing the um, game, I want to actually create that new ball. So let's say ball object is equal to a new ball. I want the ball object x position, so it's horizontal position, to be in the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to say stage dot stage width divided by two. It's worth being careful here. There's actually a, a stage dot width, and that isn't actually the size of the movie clip. It's the size relative to the amount of clips within the movie, which is a totally different thing. Seems a little odd, but that's the way it's done, so you can't argue with it. Uh, so stage height. Oops. And by default, it's not going to be doing anything, so I want it to be red. So I say ball object go to and stop. So go to a frame and stop there. Don't keep playing frame one because that's the red frame. So it's going to basically, when we create this object, it's going to put it in the middle of the screen. And it's going to stop at a red ball, which means we're not doing anything with it. Which is good. So then we want to add that ball to this clip. So when we start the clip up, hopefully, there'll be a red ball right in the middle of the clip. Stage dot add child, and then we want to the child we want to add to the stage, which is our main movie clip, is the ball object. Okay. So now, when I run this movie clip, um, it should allow us to see a red ball in the middle of the screen. really exciting not but what that means is we can create movie clips wherever we want to and we can reference them and tell it what to do which is very important because that's a fundamental part of actually creating a game